2015 R22 Freon versus R410A and the alternatives. Okay, first off, we need to uh, dispel a few myths, or I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, our, our attention is going to be totally toward the high temp air conditioning application. Uh, you know, you got to realize there's differences in refrigerant flows, differences in compression ratios, differences in uh, the amount of refrigerant needed, so on and so forth. So uh, when I say there is no drop-in alternative for R22, I am only referring to the high temp air conditioning application. Uh, that is what the focus of this video is going to be on. I'm not going to get into medium temp and low temp or any mobile type applications such as automotive. Uh, all those are different applications, different design characteristics, so on and so forth. So our main focus is on high temp air conditioning, uh, typically 25 tons and below. Uh, it can relate to commercial, it can relate to residential. Uh, and it would just be a standard type structure uh, like a home or a business, so on and so forth. So with that said, um, we'll uh, move on to the next clip or the next chart. This is a chart that basically shows uh, the allocations that have been granted for R22 production by the EPA over the past uh, couple of years and then starting in 2015 we have a few estimates as to what the EPA production allowances will be. Uh, they just made a final rule in October 2014 and so this is demonstrated in the sea green or bright green uh, bars uh, next to the corresponding years of 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Notice that those levels are lower than the original proposed levels. Now, the gold arrow up top is an EPA uh, estimated demand. You know, so you can see how how far uh, the production will outstrip demand. So it's very critical that if you get a Freon leak, uh, that you repair it. It's either repair it or replace the equipment. Uh, and you're definitely going to want to uh, do this very, very soon. If you've got a Freon leak or, or anything along those lines, uh, you're going to be wanting to uh, phase out. The inventory over to the far right is just a hypothetical. They don't know exactly how much. Use of alternative refrigerants in HVAC systems. Over the past few years, the home comfort industry has been working to phase out the production of the cooling refrigerant known as R22 Freon. However, in early 2012, recent changes to government regulation regarding this transition have created uncertainty in the marketplace, and prices for R22 have dramatically increased as a result. In response to the rising prices, many refrigerant manufacturers have stepped up their marketing efforts for several alternative refrigerants, claiming they are cost-effective drop-in replacements for R22. Three most popular are R407C, R438A, also known as Icyon M099, and R422, also known as New 22 the problems associated with these alternative refrigerants are many. Alternative refrigerants are not compatible with mineral oil. All HVAC manufacturers nitrogen charged dry units containing mineral oil lubricant using alternative refrigerants to service R22 mineral oil units can have detrimental effects on the operation of the unit. The use of alternative refrigerant in systems containing mineral oil as their lubricant voids the manufacturer warranty and compressor warranty. The use of alternative refrigerants in R22 systems containing polyester oil, POE, can lead to performance loss, capacity and energy efficiency hits, temperature glide variations, and some combinations will be more detrimental to the environment than R22. Units designed for R22 Freon are engineered to handle the proper volume of refrigerant to cool the structure as well as allow for proper oil return to the compressor. Every alternative refrigerant has typically been found to need greater refrigerant volume 
than that allowed in a system that was designed for R22 Freon. Given all the risks and facts stated above, HVAC manufacturers do not support the use of any alternative refrigerant at this time. It is important that you carefully consider the issues associated with their use, including the nullification of your manufacturing compressor warranty before allowing a technician or a licensed HVAC contractor to service your HVAC equipment. We encourage you to get involved and urge your HVAC contractor to only replace R22 Freon with Virgin R22 Freon. The following chart is basically describes the use of a of an R22 system that has been retrofitted to the following refrigerants R407A, R407C, R407F, R417A, R422B, R422D, R424A and R438A. Now, notice the capacity changes from R22. All of them are negative. In other words, the efficiency hits are going to be astronomical. You're going to you're going to pay more to run the unit. It's going to it's likely going to tear the unit up. Uh, there is a lack of volume uh, efficiency. In other words, the volumes aren't right. And it's because the, the unit was designed for R22. It was not designed for any other any other refrigerant. So the flow rates are going to be different. Um, and then you go into total estimated cap capacity change. You know, capacity is related to outdoor temp. If the temp is hot, which is typically when an air conditioner breaks, is when it's hot out. You know, these are going to have a degrading effect. If it's if it's really hot, if the temperatures are extreme, the unit is not going to keep up. It's not going to keep you cool. It's not going to work properly. So why would you want to, you know, switch your unit over to a, a competing refrigerant that may or may not be there or that's not designed for the unit? Well, why would you want to do that? It's just going to wind up costing you more anyway. So what difference would it make? <clears throat> Okay, this is uh, questions and answers about R22A. R22A, also known as R22A refrigerant, is a highly flammable, colorless gas, heavier than air. The product's material data safety sheet states that it is, a comp it is composed of liquefied petroleum gas. Its contents have been identified as propane. In some cases, it may also contain small amounts of other hydrocarbons or a pine scented odorant. What are the potential safety risks of R22A? If enough R22A is concentrated in one space and the refrigerant, well, refrigerant comes in contact with an ignition source, it could burn or even explode. Now, this R22A has been basically passed off as a do-it-yourself do it type refrigerant. Uh, so it's very important that you understand, you know, when you go to try to defeat something, there's always pros and cons you know there is no silver bullet in regards to this you run the risk of tearing up your unit you know killing yourself or burning down your house you know it's not worth it you want to do it right furthermore has EPA determined whether R22A can be safely used as a refrigerant in air conditioning equipment designed for use with HCFC 22? No, R22A has not been submitted to the EPA for review for use as a refrigerant in existing air conditioning equipment designed for use with HCFC 22 R22. And EPA has not approved R22 A for use in such equipment. R22 is an ozone depleting refrigerant with which has been widely used in home air conditioning systems and its supply is now being phased out in response to the Mot Montreal Protocol. EPA reviews health, safety, and environmental impacts of refrigerants through its significant new alternatives policy SNAP program. EPA's program is to evaluate and regulate substitutes for ozone depleting chemicals that are being phased out. Uh, the agency is authorized to identify published lists and acceptable unacceptable substitutes. Is it legal to sell R22A for use as a refrigerant air conditioning designed for use with HCFC 22? No. Do not do it. The FBA, the FBI is looking into issues seeking victims in the matter of Superfreeze 22A and other flammable refrigerants. The FBI 
the, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Criminal Investigation Division, and the U.S. Department of Transportation Office of Inspector General are conducting an investigation into flammable refrigerants sold as Superfreeze 22, Superfreeze 12A, Superfreeze 134A, and Virosafe 22A and R134A. These products have not been submitted to the EPA for review as an alternative and accepted refrigerant. If you suspect your air conditioning system was recharged with Superfreeze R22A, you should hire a licensed contractor and inform them of what you suspect and have your system serviced. Have the uh, flammable refrigerant removed and recharged properly. Do not attempt to fix it yourself. Additionally, you can go to the FBI website at FBI, www.fbi.gov and do a search for further information. So with that said, uh, your best long-term uh, refrigerant choice is to replace the equipment and install uh, an R410A Puron based unit. Uh, that is the best long-term refrigerant uh, choice uh, for high temp air conditioning. Uh, the best short-term refrigerant is still going to be R22. Uh, the downsides to use an R22 is, is uh, you, you have to repair all refrigerant leaks. Uh, topping off a system is, uh, is the old way of doing things and it's just not going to be feasible uh, economically to continue to do things that way. Uh, the other downside with using R22 Freon is is that the production ban is coming. You know, within about another five more years, there there's only going to be reclaimed uh, amounts left, and so there's a good possibility that uh, scarcity will will uh, reign large. It's very important that you be careful on who you use. You only want to use licensed people to service your air conditioner. Thanks for viewing, and I hope this was uh, informative. That concludes my 2015 update to R22 versus R410A Puron and the alternatives. My name is Ray Austin with Austin Air Company. If you live in the Katy, Cypress, Richmond, Texas areas, or some surrounding areas, you can give us a call at 832-475-6895. Or, for more information, you can always visit us on our main website at www.austinairco.com. Thank you. Have a great day.